Hi everyone. Today we will learn how to fine tune a transformer model like a bird. So the first thing we want is to install the transformer library. And I'm going to use a data set from the Kaggle called a toxic comments data set. We can go there and we will have a text field and we have a label whether the given comment is a toxic or you know it is a threat or insult to something but we're going to focus on whether it is toxic or not so if you have a transformer already installed it will not install again let me clear the output i'm importing pandas and i have downloaded this kaggle data set and stored it in my drive i'm just loading the data set. So we can see we have a comment text and we also have whether it is a toxic or not, whether it's an insult or not. As I said, we're going to focus whether it is toxic or not. We can see a data set has more than one lakh records, but since I'm more focused on showing you the methodology, how to fine tune the model and not much focus on the accuracy, we will take only first thousand records so that we can run things faster. So now we have two column, which is the comment text and whether it's a toxic or not. Next thing we will import certain thing like NumPy. We have already imported pandas and we require train test split from these scikit-learn and some accuracy metric. To train or a fine tune model using transformer, we will require two things to import. One is called training arguments and then hugging face transformer has a trainer API, which help us to train the pre-trained models and then we're going to use BERT as a pre-trained model and we're going to fine tune that same model. So let me import it. So I'm importing BERT tokenizer and the BERT for sequence classification. Since we are doing with the text classification, we're importing that class. And both BERT tokenizer class and BERT for sequence classification can take the model name as a pre-trained model name and it will download that model for us. And if you already have those models, then it will take it from the cache. Now we have our tokenizer and the model instance. Like we have a tokenizer and then we have a or model instance, which is the BERT model, BERT for a sequence classification. Next thing, since I'm using GPU, since I'm using GPU on the collab, I will put that model on the GPU using the two CUDA method. Now we can test like, let's say, uh, let's say I have the sample sentences like I'm eating apple or I'm playing cricket or just make it a shorter. And we can see how this tokenizer output looks like. So we can pass our list of sentences to the tokenizer and give some information like whether the padding is true. Uh, so padding is true is when like, let's say we have one sentence which is 500 length and we have other sentence which is just 200 length. So the smaller sentences will get the padding. Similarly, if the sentence is longer, it will get truncated. And we can see how the tokenizer output looks like. So tokenizer output is kind of a dictionary. We can see it has three keys, input IDs, token type IDs, and the attention mask. And for each key, we will see the value is a list of list. Since we had a two examples here, that's why we have a two list where each list is a token representation of the each example. Next thing we will do, is to split our data set into two things like training and the validation data set using the scikit-learn train test list. And since it is a pandas data frame or series, we will convert into the list because tokenizer expect the list of strings. And the same thing what we did here, we did it for, we will do it for our data set. We can see our tokenized data will also have the same keys what we saw on the top. 
it has input ids token type ids and attention marks and the value corresponding to this particular input ids will be a list of list and we can look at the the first examples input ids you can see it is just a list of token and if you look at the attention mask attention mask tells us whether the given word is a what you call it's a valid word coming from the text example or it, it, it is a padding or the padded word and we're just printing the list of you know our original data the x train since we took only the thousand examples and the 20 percent set is our validation set that's why we have 200 in the validation okay we have already seen on the top how to print tokenizer output now to fine tune model on our own custom data set we need to convert our tokenized output into the data set format so we can use the pytorch data set and if you go to the documentation we will see if you want to create the custom data set then we need to implement three methods which is the init method length method and the get item method. and even we have hugging face documentation that how to create the custom data set uh, sorry how to create a data set object from your cu custom data set so we will look at here so the we have init method which takes our tokenized output what we have it's going to take that output and it is also going to take the corresponding label that's what the init method does and the length method is going to simply return the length of our input ids which is nothing but our total examples what we have length of the input ids because input ids is a list of list and the length of the list is equal to number of examples we have so that's what the length method does simply return the length of the input ids and here is the important function as it we call it get item it's going to take an index and from our old tokenized data sets it's going to return a example from that particular index and that example we are returning as a dictionary and if you look at what we are returning the first thing our encodings hold actually our tokenized data so we are getting the items of those tokenized data since it is a dictionary the items will be key value pair key will be input ids value will be this list of list same the key will be token type ids and the values will be this so what we are doing once we get that key value we are taking key as a dictionary key but we are not taking value as a list of list rather from that list of list here we are taking the value with respect to our particular example index and that's what we do so we get the dictionary key and that particular example in a tensor representation and then we do the same thing we also take a label at particular index and we will return that item which is a dictionary and this way we can create data set so we created data set by training data set by passing our tokenized training data and then validation data and we got the data set object since we have a get item method we can take our training data set and we can pass an index and it should return a dictionary representation of our training data for that particular example and we can see it return a dictionary where we have key as attention mask or input ids and then we have a labels and the tokens but if you could see now here input ids is not a list of list it's just a single list represented in a tensor so that's what we did here we pick up only the list corresponding to that particular index that's why we key remains the same because we are taking the same keys but the value rather than taking list of lists we only take one example from it this is how the get item function works then we declare one function which compute the metric for us now this function take an evaluation output so transformer evaluation output has two things one it has the labels and it has the predictions and then we use normal our scikit-learn functions to calculate what is accuracy precision and recall and we will just print the type of that function type of this argument which is nothing but an evaluation output custom type of that evaluation output okay so now we have a data set and we have a function 
to calculate the accuracy precision recall all our metric next thing we want to define the trainer so trainer is the interface that hugging face has created which take your model which we loaded pre trained model on the top this then it takes our training data set evaluation data set and the compute metric function this one now this trainer is going to pass evaluation object p to our compute function which has two things predictions and the labels and we just take the max prediction and then we compare the predictions and label and we calculate all these metrics and the another important thing is that the trainer takes a argument where we can define some arguments related to our training process and this arguments is of a type called training arguments object so training arguments object take parameters like what should be the output directory we call it simply an output how many epochs you want to train our model and this is related to gpu per device you know what should be the batch size so we want to pass eight examples now here i put epoch just one because i want to finish training faster but when you are working you can put it like 10 20 and then check the accuracy since my focus is not accuracy rather the focus is more upon methodology what needs to be done to train a custom model i just put it as a one but i have trained a model which i have trained on 10 epochs so i will show you how to save the train model and how to load that model also so let's declare our training arguments and the trainer class once we have then trainer has methods like we can use trainer dot train method which will start training and then we have evaluate method which will evaluate on our evaluate data set so let's first try the trainer method now it start training since we have a one epoch still it might take uh, you know what i say it might take one or two minutes and we can see the trainer has outputted certain details that what we have passed it is saying that the number of examples for training are 800 number of epochs we are training it's just the one epoch that's what we mentioned and the per device we are passing eight examples and there are some other information it is mentioning and we could see the 50% of our first epoch is almost finished for those 1000 examples i think when i train for the 10 epochs it took me i think 13 minutes or something i don't remember exactly but it seems to be 13 minutes okay it is almost finished now and then we will call the evaluate method since our evaluate has 200 example evaluation data set and again the batch size is the same it start evaluation and you can see it printed our details what was the accuracy recall and precision all this information it printed since it is just to one epoch we are not worried about how much accuracy and all we got another important thing is this if you could see our evaluation has printed this class type the transformer trainer utilities evaluation prediction now this is something i have printed here so when evaluate method passes this object with the compute matrix then we calculate the precision and we can check what all properties that eval object has so eval prediction has like predictions on the label id these two are mandatory thing so that's what we took in that function we have that p and we took our predictions and labels and the earth max is just finding you know what is that prediction so predictions will be predictions for toxic and prediction for non toxic right and then it is going to find the max prediction for that particular example that's why we are using erg max and then we have a predicted output here okay now we can uh, test our model like for example we our model has train on this data so we will take one example like a text example let's say i have this sentence that was a good point and uh, we have a tokenizer we have to tokenize our input so we pass that text and the same parameter but we that we want to return as a pytorch tensors because we are in the, we are using pytorch and then we are putting it on the gpu because our model is on gpu that's what we did and then 
we can unpack that input since we know token as output is a dictionary we just unpacking it and passing it to the and you get the output which is unnormalized okay we will print out them later and we will see what is that thing and that output has the logits which is unnormalized and then we want to apply the softmax to that particular thing okay let's print it so that it will be clear what we are getting at each stage okay so first thing that we print the output is of a particular thing called a sequence classifier output and you can see it has a one thing called logits and the logits are unnormalized output for each of that or you can think of the unnormalized output for each of our label the non toxic and the toxic one and the next thing we are printing is the predictions since we saw it is unnormalized then it's going to apply softmax and put it to 0 to 1 that is the normalized output and we are using dimension is equal to minus 1 so minus 1 stands for applying our softmax to the last dimension so currently the last dimension is this one which is holding our unnormalized output and this is what we get the output here so output might not output might not might not be the correct but what we will do first we will see how to save this model so our trainer has a method called save model and then we can give the name of the folder where we want to store our model and we will save that model so it has saved we can refresh it has saved here we got our custom model and it got its config file the pytorch model file and some training arguments things right this is how we can save our trained model and similar way we can also load our model so let's load our model so rather than loading our this custom model what we stored here as i told you this model is just trained on one epoch but i have trained model on a 10 epochs let's load that model so to load we do the same thing just like we use our load our pre trained model on the top by giving the model name that we want to load similar way instead of this pre trained name we can also give the folder or the path where our train model is located and it will load from that folder so we are doing same thing my model i stored in this particular folder and i'm going to use the same method and load it and then put it on a gpu once i have this model loaded it will load with all the information what layers and all it has then we can use that model to do the same prediction so let's say we can since that model is trained on the 10 epochs we can see here okay we have the sentence called that was good that was good point and let's say we do the same thing we pass it to the tokenizer that particular thing and then we get the tokenizer output we unpack it pass to our model 2 which is our currently loaded model which was trained on 10 epochs and we do that same thing like pass it to the softmax and see the predictions and we can see we got a prediction so since it is in the scientific notation we can run this numpy thing set print options which will suppress that particular value and we will get much better readable value so we can see it is saying that that was a good point and we have a high probability for the class 0 which is non toxic and the class 1 which is a toxic so the model which was trained on 10 epochs seems to be working well if i test in all the other example and then we can see now it is saying it has a high probability of toxic and low probability of non tax non toxic let me repeat what we have done so we loaded one data set from the kaggle which has a text and whether it is a toxic or non toxic we took that data set but we took only slice of that data set a thousand example because we want to run it faster and this is how data set looks like text which is the comment and whether it is a toxic or not then we imported certain scikit-learn things like train test split or any accuracy metric and then we imported few things specific to the pytorch and transformer from transformer we imported two classes one is the trainer class other is the training argument class trainer class is the one which we going to use for the training and the trainer also accepts the training arguments 
and then we need one pre-trained model because we're going to fine-tune that pre-trained model. So we decided to import the BERT model. So we imported its BERT tokenizer, and then we have BERT for sequence classification, which takes the name of the pre-trained model, and it will load both tokenizer and model. So if you are loading it first time, it will download it. If you have already loaded it, it will simply use the one in which you are one, which is in your cache. And then we put our model to the CUDA. We just look at how does tokenizer output looks like. So we give a training data set of having just two examples and we could see how does the tokenizer output looks like. And then eventually we wanted to take our data set, use training test split and convert into the training and validation. And then we tokenize each of them just like we did with the sample. Once we have a tokenized output for our training and validation data set, we want to create a dataset object. So PyTorch has a class called dataset. We can convert our tokenized output into the dataset format, which is required by the Hugging Face Transformer. And three things required for a dataset object or a dataset class to be implemented, which is the init method, get item method, and the length method. Length method simply returns the length of our tokenized data which is nothing but the number of examples what we have. Init method is just going to take whatever we are passing to the class dataset class and store it into the encoding and the label. And this is the main function which takes a ID index and then return a dictionary containing a tokenized output for that particular example. And it's going to keep the key same whatever in our tokenized dataset, but instead of passing a list of values, we're going to take the tokenized output for that particular example and then pass it. This is the reason we are able to access our dataset object using the index and we saw how does the output look like. Next thing, we declare one compute metric function which take the evaluation object. We printed it down. Evaluation object has two things, labels and the predictions and we simply calculated those metrics and here we declared our trainer class and the training argument class the trainer object takes our model which we want to train this is our pre-trained model that what we are giving and certain data set and you know compute metric that function we have given the detail and then we train it then we evaluated it and then we can use it that same model to test it on our new examples Using trainer.save model method, we can save our model and then wherever we have saved that model, we can load that model using the similar way, the way we use our pre-trained model, which is nothing but using that particular model class, pre-trained method and give the name, the folder name where our model is stored. And then we pass it to the GPU and do the same prediction.